Hey guys, today we're going to be taking a look at ASRock's new Z77 Extreme 4. Now, the Z68 Extreme 4 Gen 3 was and it pretty much still is a very popular offering. I've got one in my personal rig, you know, I use it on a daily basis. I can recommend it, I can vouch for it. Go over to various forums around the web. People are recommending it over there, they're using it in their rigs, they've bought it and it has quite a big following. The Z77 variant here has a lot to live up to. It's got a fresh design, new heat sinks around the MOSFETs and uh, obviously it still has that black and gold theme which we first saw on that Z68 chipset but um, people love that look. It's, you know, no longer do that people want the, uh, just the performance and the features but the, you know, the look is important too and this pretty much has that. So um, being Z77 it has the support there for Intel's third generation CPUs and it also has PCI Express 3.0 support. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to take you on a quick unbox, show you what's inside, the accessories and stuff like that, and then we're going to get the board out and show you what it's all about. Okay, to start things off then, we'll do an unbox. Here we've got the Z77 Extreme 4. We're in a black box here, a little bit different from the Z68, which was, of course, in a, a grey metallic type box. Key feature here is the 555 XFAST, which we will uh, go into as we go into the video. We've got the standards across the bottom, all the badges. We've got the Crossfire SLI and, of course, support there for Intel's third generation CPUs. Over on the back, we've got even more detail on that uh, XFAST, the key benefits, and we won't go into those just at the moment. But um, key features of the actual board run along the bottom. We've got the premium gold solder caps, which give extended life, digi power and the 8 plus 4 phase power design those two obviously work hand in hand and then we've got the DDR3 support which uh, tells you that it goes up to 2800 plus which is astronomical massive leap in uh, performance there we've got the UEFI BIOS which is of course gonna be uh, pretty much standard nowadays and um, the advantage with this which ASRock are going into is the system browser so you can identify what you've got plugged in there and uh, just see a bit more, you know, more detail, a bit of a diagram. And uh, obviously anything that I don't cover in this video will be on the full review on Vortez.net, so I will be showing that. Uh, the last thing there is the next generation PCI Express 3.0. So let's go in anyway for, um, for an unbox on the actual accessories, because uh, enough about all the marketing jargon. We've got here the quick installation guide, which is uh, going to detail all of the um, the significant things that you need to get going if uh, if you've got any problems or anything like that, or if uh, you're particularly new to system building. It's got also the different languages. We've got the uh, the software CD, which of course has the uh, the default drivers. Always go and get the uh, the latest ones though if you're. Uh, if you jump on the website, you can get the latest, obviously, um, software as well on there, and antivirus. We've got the software setup guide, which gives you a bit more of assistance if you need that. Then we've got some more leaflets here. Lucid Virtue MVP gives you a bit of a step-by-step. -step. And we've also got the, uh, the guide there for 555 XFAST. So onto the uh, the components, we've got the input-output shield, which will slot onto your case. We've got the SLI bridge, which is a uh, static fixed one. It's not the flexible type. And we've also got the cable, which is uh, the SATA 6G. We've got two of those. Uh, oddly, usually you get four of these, but we've only got two inside here. So that pretty much concludes the unbox, and we'll go and take a look at the board. Here we have the Z77 Extreme 4, and uh, I don't know about you, but I really do like this design. It looks totally unique from anything currently on the market, it really does stand out. Now we've got a brown PCB, it may look black, but it's actually brown, and we've got black slots, ports, and lanes. And with the Z77 Extreme 4, we've got a new heatsink design around the MOSFETs and the CPU socket, and of course, now traditional for the ASRock motherboards, we've got the gold solid caps. 
So we'll now take a look at the various components on Extreme 4, starting with the CPU socket. Here we've got the LGA1155, which takes Intel's second and third generation CPUs. We have a DigiPower design, which uses 8 plus 4 phases. You can see there are also the heat sinks, which are no longer a heat pipe running through them. They're both independent. Those cover the MOSFETs. And over the other side of these heat sinks, we've got 8 pin power for the CPU, just to give you extra juice for your overclocks. Turning our attention then to the memory, we have dual channel DDR3 slots. We've got a maximum capacity here of 32 gigabyte, and we can start from 1066 megahertz all the way up to 2800. Obviously, that's overclocked. And next to this, we've got the native USB 3 connector. In the bottom corner of the board we've got the SATA storage ports and these are split into SATA 2 and SATA 3. So the black ports are SATA 2. If you've got a traditional hard drive, perhaps a little bit older, the mechanical type, then you're going to need to use these black ports here as this gives you 3G. And the grey ports are SATA 3. So if you've got a solid state drive which is SATA 3 capable, then you're going to need to use these ports as that gives you 6G. So there's two columns there. The ones on the far right use AS Media. So they've moved away from using Marvel as the controller and they're using AS Media now. And the two on the left hand side, the grey ports, uses the Z77 chipset. On the other side of these ports, we have a power and reset button. Now, this is extremely useful if you're a system builder. If you've got your system built on a test bench and not inside a case, because the you know the last thing you want is to be connecting cables for the power and reset. It's just a hassle. So you've got these convenient power and reset. On you know ne right next to these, we've got the pins. If you did want to connect the uh, the case buttons up to uh, up to the motherboard. Next to that, we have the LED debug. ASRock call this Doctor Debug and this is going to give you the uh, error codes if you do have problems on post and it just helps you to identify any potential problems you uh, obviously get a code on this panel you go to the instructions manual and you look up the code and it will tell you exactly what is wrong with the board it's interesting to see that ASRock have chosen to go with a much smaller heatsink on the Intel Z77 chip compared to what we saw on the Z68 it's uh, a lot more subtle and it also blends into the board a lot better. For the expansion slots, we have a variety of PCI and PCI Express. We have two PCI slots for the legacy, you know, the older type of devices, and then we have four PCI Express slots. We've got two X1s at the top and the bottom, and then in the middle we have two PCI Express 3.0 slots. So we've got support there for NVIDIA's new 600 series and AMD's 7000 series. Now these slots are both X16, but if you do go Crossfire or SLI, then it will drop down to X8. On the back of the motherboard, we have a variety of different ports for the input-output. I'm just going to run through these from left to right. We have PS2 keyboard mouse, two USB 3 ports. We have DVI, VGA and HDMI, so we can switch between the discrete and the integrated graphics. We've got the clear CMOS button, which is extremely useful if you need to get back to your default settings and clear them. We have three USB 2 ports. The top there is the Fatality mouse port, and then the bottom we've got eSATA. We've got Gigabit LAN, RJ45, and uh, we've got the two USB 3 ports beneath that. And then we've got the audio jacks, which is six channel audio. And at the bottom there, we've got the optical SPDIF. With ASRock's Z77 motherboards, they're bundling what is called XFast 555 technology. Now, this basically encompasses three things XFast RAM, XFast LAN, and XFast USB. So, in each of these, we're going to have five times faster transfer rates. And the idea is uh, with the XFast RAM, memory is going to be optimized for things like Photoshop, and for XFast LAN, as you probably guessed, the network connection is going to improve for things like gaming latency. And then for USB, again, it's fairly self-explanatory. Five times faster in terms of USB transfer rates. Okay, guys, so that concludes our video today. We've been taking a look at ASRock's new Z77 Extreme 4. 
and it is a really really nice looking board lots and lots of features and you know based on what we saw with Z68 Gen 3 with the features, the performance, the overclocks and uh, the price point I'm expecting good things from this Z77 hopefully we'll be able to uh, get a nice overclock and in the full review on Vortex.net we're going to explore a lot of things we're going to check out Lucid Virtue MVP we're going to see how far we can overclock with this board with the 8 plus 4 phase power design we're going to be checking out lots of different things and also the XFast 555 that will be a feature that we'll cover too so I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen anyway today thanks very much for your support and if you haven't already make sure you comment and click that subscribe button